Well, I'm going to start by say, saying I really enjoyed the movie. It was on those great films where you're just full of mystery. I kept guessing what was going to happen. And oh, I'm, great. I was just wondering about um, what first attracted you to getting involved in the project. And if you went on that same journey reading the screenplay that I've just been on watching it, kind of well, just... I, 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 I actually, I think you put your finger right on it because that was the sort of exactly how I felt when I read it the first time. I was like, whoa, what the fuck is going on here? I'm just curious to find out what's going to happen. And, and, um, and it all seems so weird and intriguing and you couldn't really figure out who are these people? What are they doing to each other? Do they sort of actually know each other or are they just pretending? Or I thought that whole relationship with James and Berenice was just like, I just wanted to dive right in and just start shooting those scenes because they were so much fun to just to read them. So yeah, that was sort of the, 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 the first sort of thing that attracted me to it actually sort of, but I think that's, probably always the way it is with me it's it's very much a gut feeling of you know when you read the script the first time are you that intrigued by it or are you left a little bit cold and here i was absolutely not left cold at all i was really really enjoying it and and, and i thought it was really good fun a really good read yeah i mean you might not have been left cold but the the character can this certainly got cold elements to him i wondered if it's quite how he, I mean, he, at times he can be a bit of a nasty piece of work. Do you quite enjoy playing roles that are very far removed from yourself to let you kind of tap into emotions that are probably, and, and feelings that are within all of us, but we, we suppress them for societal what reasons, I, usually? <laughs> what I, what I, it's not so much that I want to be a mean person. It's not so much that. It's more that um, with these characters, because we all sort of have this thing where we all try to be, we, we know that, for, I mean, we, uh, we have to keep up, our, keep up appearances. We have to be, we have to make nice and, you know, so everybody's actually like that in a way. You always try to be the decent kind of person that you think the world wants you to be. And when then there's a dark side to that character, that opens up a space for you as an actor to work with. You can allow stuff to happen because you know that this is going to, it's sort of, it sort of opens the whole thing somehow. Do you know, can, do you, does that make sense? Um, it, it, it allows you a lot more, um, it allows you a lot more room. Cause, I mean, you know, as an actor, you know the character's gonna go there, but it's quite important not to reveal that till it actually happens. Or perhaps, you know, just slightly hint at it if that is needed. But um, I think it's quite important to keep your secrets and not sort of, spill the beans before the, need, the beans need to be spilled. Um, so, so, uh, yeah, and then the fun thing about this, when I read it the first time, I remember thinking, have you said, have you, I did a, a movie called The Square at uh, once. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah, I love The Square, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, when I read this, I was like, whoa, what the fuck is going on? Is this the continued story of what happened to that guy in The Square? Because this guy has just lost his job in a big museum, which is what happens to Christian in the square. So I was, has, somebody, has someone tried to ride Christian from the square would not do, would not go that far. He, he would not, he would, he would, his morals would probably stop him before he went and did something like that. Yeah. Um, it's funny you mentioned the square. I went to uh, New York and Terry, uh, the monkey man, <laughs> taught me how to walk like an ape. That yeah, was quite, a, quite an eye-opening experience, and turns out I'm quite good at being an ape, which um, I don't know if that's a compliment or not. Um, but I was wondering too <laughs> about um, just act acting as a profession. Do do you think it gives you quite um, an interesting and unique take on the kind of human psyche? Because I guess I mean the the, the expression you know you'd understand more if you walked a mile in my shoes. Well, you're always you're walking miles in people's shoes all the time. So it must give you quite a, a profound understanding of your fellow man in some ways. Um, well, I, I'd love to say that is true, but that would also be sort of saying that I know everything about everybody and that I would like be the perfect therapist because I could give you the answer to any question you would ask. And obviously that is not the case. I can't even fix my own life. So, so I'd like, as much as I would like to say yes to that, I, 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 um, 
I, I don't think it's entirely true. And, and also what I think is not so much that I try to take on a different person's, you know, thing or psychology or something. It's more that I go and look for stuff in the character that I can relate to myself that I can sort of find resonates in, within me. For James, for instance, it's that crazy, being so crazy ambitious as he is. I could totally connect with that. And then when you start connecting those things to you, then you sort of get, um, I have a feeling that, then I get sort of the resonance that I need in order for the character to, get, to gain some authenticity. And then you can allow yourself on top of that to have him do all these other things and then it starts to connect in a weird way. But, um, but to, to sort of, I think there's probably a, a, a question that a lot of actors have gotten over the years that, you know, are you, so, are you able to understand any sort of psyche or any, and, and, and that would be amazing, but I'm not. No, I'm, what, what, I am actually trying to do the opposite because I think in order for this to become something you can, identify with something you can you, you can um, it has to have that authenticity and and in, and in order to have that authenticity it has to be connected to something in me somehow so I'm always looking for stuff that I can relate to And bobs and then it becomes like this weird sort of almost you know like when you're drawing an elephant by connecting the dots from one to 90 is, is that kind of feel in a way yeah um of course i was wondering uh, too if you could connect to the character from an artistic point of view in a sense that are you are you someone that ever picks up a paintbrush and that has a tries your hand at a little bit of um art in any way or, or do you, is that not no. something you've ever no no, no i i uh, or anything but i i I don't know if you know this, but I, I, I am sort of like a musician also. And I, so I, I do my little music thing as my kind of antidote to the, to the, to, to the acting thing. Because the acting thing is always a team effort. There's always a lot of people involved. Someone's written it, someone's directing it, someone's putting on, I mean, someone's telling me to wear this, stand over there, do that, go, I mean, all that. So it's always a very sort of, it's a collaboration. And then what I actually really enjoy is just to go home and sit with my piano or my guitar or my computer and just be my own boss of the creative process. And, and so, so that would be, that would be my go-to. I, 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 I'm not, I'm not, I don't paint or sculpt or any, anything like that. No, but what, what would you say is the, the greatest piece of art you've ever seen with your own eyes? Have you ever sort of stood in front of something and just had a, an incredible experience doing so. I, well, I, I hate to do these things because there are so many amazing pieces of art out there and there are so many, I'm a totally a, a, an art freak. But I will say there is one thing that really, really got me and that is, um, that is an art installation by Icelandic artist Olafur Eliasson. Oh. Yeah, the Tate was and, it. And um, I, don't, I don't know if you've come across this, but it's actually, I mean, it's a, it's a thing that is, it was built in, the, uh, in a museum, but it's actually sort of like a tunnel. It's a very long tunnel and it's, and it's, um, and, and it's lit from the outside, different colors. It's probably a hundred meters long. You walk inside it, and the colors on, on the walls change all the time. And it's so foggy in there. So you can only see like 25 centimeters ahead of you. So you can't, I mean, and people are coming from the other end as well. And you don't see them till the very, very last second. And then there's a quite loud sort of soundscape to it as well. So it's really getting all your senses working at the same time. And also you're a little bit scared because you're like, so what am I gonna, who am I gonna bump into? Or what's, I mean, you've got no idea if some, if, you know, you, you've got no idea what's going to happen in there. So it's, it, it was also slightly, the first time I did it was quite scary and frightening. But the way it's sort of fucked with all my senses at the same time, I thought that was cool and so impressive. And I, and I just kept going back and forth when I just, when I sort of overcame the first fear. But that is probably, if, if there has to be one piece, one work of art that I would sort of, 
that I would sort of say was the most amazing, that would be it. I was wondering too about talking of standing in front of an incredible piece of art. I want to ask what it was like standing in front of Mick Jagger because I know, I know. Well, that is standing in front of an amazing piece of art. It is. <laughs> I know, obviously, this kind of negates everything that a kind of actor is supposed to do, and you wouldn't be such a good actor if if you did have this. But obviously, in those moments, you have to be thinking about what your character's thinking. But is there ever a little creeping thing in the back of your head that just goes, "Fucking hell, that's Mick Jagger." Not not <laughs> while we're doing the takes. No, that uh, that luckily I don't think I would do that. Be able to do the job if that was still there. Yeah. When when I when we were actually shooting, that totally goes away, and you're not there with Debicki and Jackie. You're there with the characters in the situation, and that's obviously quite important because otherwise I think it it'll be a mess. But I have to say that I, I was like, so can you please sit me down or have me hold on to something before you bring him into the room? Because I might <laughs> faint. Um, and then it was actually kind of weird because I'd, I'd just been talking to the director about something in that scene that we were shooting with Jagger the next day because there was something that I didn't felt sat quite right with the scene. And I'd just been talking to the director about that. And then I was on the phone to an agent or whoever you know, standing right there next to Lake Como. And then I, I put down the phone and I turned around and he was right in front of me. And I was like, hey, well, oh, good that you're here. Great. There's something in that scene that we're shooting tomorrow that we need to talk about. So I totally sort of forgot to be starstruck or whatever, because I was so, I mean, caught up in the thing of, you know, what we're doing. And I have to say, a more lovely and more, a more humble kind of attitude to the, uh, you have to look a very long time to find something like that. I have to say, he was just, I thought he was just fucking brilliant and amazing and really good. And he was just so much fun to be around. It was like every time he came on set, everybody just got in a really good mood. He just sort of has this thing about him where he's just, he's just spreading a really good atmosphere and vibe around him. And, and, and I think his approach to the work was like, I fucking just want to do my bit to make everything I, to do everything I can to make this as good as possible. I was going to ask, obviously, not just, um, it's not all about Mick Jagger. I mean, Elizabeth is fantastic. You two have to have a very intense um, relationship within the movie. I wondered about uh, collaborating closely with her because she's a superb actress. Oh my God, she is so, so brilliant. And, and, and what a, uh, such an amazing colleague. And, and one thing was that the scenes I thought were really, really brilliantly written, but obviously they are not gonna come off the paper if you don't have someone really, I mean, you need, you need someone great to work with in order for it really to come alive. And I think that the scenes were brilliantly written, but I think also what we, from from the way that we worked them together, we we gave them we gave them that extra thing that that happens when you sort of start start living them, and 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 um, yeah, I mean that was that was really really cool. I thought I I, I thought we connected with on 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 these scenes really really well, and we made them. It, I mean, I think I think she perhaps felt the same as I did that these scenes were written in a way that they, it's really playful and as an actor you just want to dive right in and you just want to you just want to just want to play around with it it's like having a really great playmate and some really cool toys and um that that was sort of the feeling on this i, I that's um and we had to, there are so many great scenes with um with james and berenice so that was just really a joy I have to say I think she's so so talented and, and a lovely person and I was wanting to ask you because I, I know you've obviously had a, a sort of a, a quite a, a long and kind of really sort of good career to date but it did feel like there was a bit of a turning point with the square but obviously it led on oh to my the, lord of course yeah 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 you yeah. I mean yeah I, I think what happens is that when when a film like that goes and wins the palm door the whole industry sees it I mean, everybody in the industry all over the world will see the film that wins the Palme d'Or. And, and therefore, everybody all of a sudden saw me because I had never really been anywhere internationally. I had done a little bit of work in Sweden and some in Germany and then mainly my stuff had been in Denmark. But, um, so yes, that, that totally opened, that, that opened so many doors for me. I'm so, so proud and so thankful 
to Ruben Östlund and and to that movie for everything it's done for me. I I'm, I I can't I can't thank that whole thing enough. It's really really done stuff for me that I never ever dreamed or imagined would happen. Yeah, because yeah, I guess you might you I guess you get to a certain point probably in your career where you probably think this is it for me now. This is how I'm, I'm enjoying myself. I'm kind of getting these roles and I'm kind of working. And, and yeah, and then obviously it's thrust you right into the limelight, obviously led on to like Dracula and stuff like that. And it's a mm -hmm. really good example, isn't it? Your story of how it can happen at any time in this industry, can't it? That, that role can just be given to anyone at any yeah, age. Yeah, I mean, in that, I mean, I, I always sort of say that, I mean, it was obviously a, a total stroke of luck that he needed someone like me. I mean, if he had wanted someone 26 years old, five foot, five foot two high and, and, uh, and blonde hair, we would probably not be talking to each other right now. Um, so, but he needed something that looked like I do. And then he ended up going with me after casting like 200 actors for that part. And I think everybody wanted that part because it's just a freaking amazing, it's like driving the Ferrari of my profession, isn't it? To do something like that. So, so, um, but it is true. But then, you know, I, what I really sort of pride myself on is also that, that even if it was a struck of luck that I, that I fitted the description, I sort of also had the kind of toolbox that was needed in order to give him what he needed to, to fulfill this vision. And that's probably the one thing that I'm most proud of, that I was actually able to tap into this thing and into his heart and soul and brain and give him what he needed to make this film that I think is fucking brilliant. And I think it is um, a very special one because it's very unlike any other film. And it's really fucking taking a chance because it's really, really long. It's got a dramaturgy like nothing else. It's, it's not in any way, conserve, I mean, it's not really anything you ever saw before. I thought when I saw it the first time, I was like, whoa, man, this is fucking incredible. So I'm so, so proud and thankful for that whole thing. I can, I can never thank that whole thing and Ruben enough. Yeah, could you tell straight away when you got that script that this was different to other stuff you'd done? Yeah. Well, I mean, I didn't actually get the script right away. What, what, what happened was that I was asked for the first casting to um, prepare that speech that I'd given the museum at one point. I got a little bit of information and then I, was, I had to write that, that speech myself. And then I, I went to the casting and then what we did was that he sat down and he, he talked me through the whole script. And then we did improvs of like six or seven of the big scenes there. It took forever. I think I was in there for three hours or something. And then I ended up, and then, I, then he said, okay, that's fine. You can be on, go, I've got everything I, I, I need. And I said, listen, but I prepared this speech. Don't you want to hear it and see it? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. And, um, and then I did that and I have actually heard him say in interviews after that it was actually something in that speech that tipped the whole thing for him, that sort of said to him, okay, I want this one for the part. Because I that thing where I sort of say, uh, there's a speech and you, so you stand in this square and you can ask people, well, can you, can you buy me dinner? Can you uh, look after my dog while I go to the dentist? my father just died, can I talk to you for half an hour? And I, I've heard him say in interviews and, and, and also with him that that sort of tipped it and we kept it in the movie. Um, so, I mean, I did not read the script until quite late in that casting process actually. So I, I, I couldn't tell from reading the script, but I remember quite clearly coming home from that casting and going crazy in my apartment, telling my wife, listen, I need this one I fucking want. I, if there was ever fucking anything in this industry, in this, in this job I wanted, it's this. And obviously I was like, I'm never gonna get it because after Force Monsieur, he could have gotten anybody in the whole fucking world to work for him. And so it was just, I suppose, my luck that he thought that I was exactly right for it. And, and um, yeah. It's um, it's a really I I really enjoy that whole thing and that whole story and and it's and it still makes me really happy and proud to talk about it.
Mm. Well, you um, you know, you say luck, but I mean, you did such a fantastic job in it. I think luck only takes you so far. I think the rest well, of that is that's good. true. But that's what I mean when I say that that um, so so if I did not if I hadn't had um, what was needed to to give him what he need, I mean, the luck was sort of fitting the description, and then I sort of had every uh, luckily uh, or or. I, I had everything that he needed in order to 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 sculpt and mold that 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 character around me. So that was, yeah. I got a couple of quick questions about future stuff. I just wondered about. I mean, obviously, I'm sure you've been asked before about a, a second season of Dracula. It was such a brilliant little mini series. Has have discussions taken place yet, or is do you, do you know if that's a possibility? Yeah, for the I think I think that it's an ongoing kind of thing, but it's a. Uh, I'm not actually sure where the whole process is. And I think it might have also been slowed down by by the COVID thing and everything. But I, I, there's definitely no decision to do a second. But also, I haven't heard that there's a decision not to do one. So um, it's all up in the air. All I can say is that I would definitely love to do one more. I thought that is probably the most brilliant company I've ever been in. All those other actors, especially obviously John Heffernan and Dolly Wells and Mark and Stephen, the writers, the whole team. I mean, I mean, it was just, it's, it's really up there as one of my favorite things ever. And also, I mean, taking on this character, which um, made me shit my pants in the beginning because I was like, everybody's got their own idea of what Dracula should be like and how can I ever not get this wrong? Um, so, but then we, we just started doing it and it, it was really, really tough work, but it was really worth it. I have to say that's not, I mean, I'd so love to do one more, but I, I, but I, there's, there's nothing solid about not doing one or doing one. So I can't actually enlighten you on that. But one thing that is solid, my final question, yeah, it's just uh, The Northman. Um, which, yeah. I mean, that looks, I mean, it, I mean, Eggers is a superb filmmaker, so I'm so excited about that. Uh, are you allowed to say how your character fits into that story yet, or is that still kind of... I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually a little bit reluctant, because I'm not really sure that, that I am allowed to say too much. What I can say is that this is based on the ancient... Danish story of Prince Amlad, which is set sort of in the 800s, 900s, something like that. This is a story that, you know, as stories were back then, they were told from, I mean, people would tell them all over again. And then at one point, a guy called Saxo wrote it down in like 1100 or something. That is the story that Shakespeare found and that, that sort of inspired him to write Hamlet. And this is the same story that has inspired this, this, the story of this movie. And we are actually keeping it in the day and age where it's sort of originally played out, which is like eight, nine hundred, something like that. So it's set in what is the Viking era. And therefore it has sort of a quite, it, it, it has that Viking feel to it. Um, and I don't, oh man, I'd love to, I'd love to say something about the, the, the character, but I have a feeling that they would probably not want me to. Yeah. So right. I should probably not do that. Well, hopefully I'll be able to interview you when that film has been made at a proper press junket in person and we can talk about it then. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Yeah.